Okay, so here's kind of what we have. Now I've got the I've got the trolling motor turned that way, so you can see that I've I've got clearance to rotate that uh, 360 degrees if I so felt like doing that. And then this is our pontoon here. We used uh, we made sure all the fittings were clean and well glued so that we're watertight. Now at the two T's, there is a possibility for me to let in water. So if I get in a situation where I overload it again, I'll be down and I'll fill up my pontoon and all will be lost on on this. So uh, try to avoid that. But I feel like we're going to do fine. This should help support the weight uh, and kind of offset all the uh, problems that we've had uh, or that I've seen other people have with too much weight in the rear. Uh, I haven't done the actual uh, calculation for the the little PVC pontoon that I built for this, but uh, one cubic, cubic foot of displacement should be good for 64 pounds. And so if I'm anywhere in that range, that ought to at least uh, cut the weight that the trolling motor applies by half. So, and we'll try to get one of it on the water uh, pretty soon. Uh, probably one on the water and a little fishing applied to it off the GoPro. So we'll go ahead and cut this together and put it on the internet. Hopefully somebody finds this useful and, and uh, it works for them. Thanks. Goodbye. Okay. So here we go. We, uh, we've got this last little piece to put in here. The way I've got this, uh, this set up as a secondary pontoon. We used a four inch T with a two inch tap, the two inch bushing down to one and a quarter inch. The one and a quarter inch fit pretty loose over here. Um, I probably could have went with uh, one inch, but I wasn't sure of that at the time. Uh, you can see that this is, this is on there fairly, fairly loose. So, and hopefully, if we run into anything uh, that gets us into a bind, we're sort of hoping that that's going to give us a little bit of cushion and if you hit a few bumps. Yes, well aware there's a potential I hit something and roll this bad boy right off of there, you know, snap it off. But the idea is that this thing sits directly underneath where we're going to put our battery. And the idea here is that this is going to help balance out the load from the oversized battery and uh, make it a little smoother, a little easier uh, on the road. Okay folks, this is my o Oswego. Uh, I think it's Classic Accessories makes this. Uh, it's got a total of uh, 450 pounds of capacity. Uh, some of the problems that we're finding here, and I've seen a lot of videos online, uh, kind of the same thing is when you put that big gigantic battery that everybody wants because they they bought a rowboat and they don't really want to row it uh they buy that big gigantic battery put it on the back with their trolling motor inside the, the battery basket or the cargo basket that's not on this one but comes supplied with this model it digs way in the back so what we're doing here is i'm going to make a few adjustments and i'm going to build me a pontoon that I can slip on when I'm using the trolling motor and the big gigantic battery. Now, the real fix here, guys, is to buy a smaller battery and don't be scared of the oars. But in my case, I'm too cheap to go out and buy a smaller battery. I already had a battery that I've got with my 14 foot uh, little John boat out there. So I just decided not to spend any more money and throw that battery on here. And I ran into the same problem that everybody does. It sags way in the back. The battery is just almost in the water so we built this now i have no idea if this is going to work but just going off the basics here i'm adding a small extra pontoon just to sort of lift up that weight and i'm only